actually the first year I've ever made my own tomato paste and I loved it so much that I've made it three times now. We've had a very good tomato year this year so I've had a ton of tomatoes to use up and this was the perfect solution. To make tomato paste you'll need a lot of tomatoes and the best ones for this job are paste tomatoes. That is probably not a surprise. They have a lot more meat and a lot more body and you'll get more finished product and it will have a better texture. You'll also need some basic kitchen equipment including a large heavy bottom pot. And for this project we're going to want to leave the skins on but remove some of the guts and seeds inside and when you're working with paste tomatoes which are generally smaller like this I find that the easiest way to do it is to take a sharp really pointy knife poke it right into the bottom fairly deep and then squeeze the guts out into a bowl and then I just kind of chunk the tomatoes up I think this is the quickest way most efficient way to work through them. You definitely don't need to measure your tomatoes. I like to just for my own knowledge. For this video and this recipe, I am using 30 cups of chunked up tomatoes like this, just to give you an idea of how much it yields. You can use whatever quantity you want, whatever quantity you have, just know that it does cook down an awful lot. While you should use mostly paste tomatoes, you can get away with throwing in a few big, beautiful heirlooms for a little extra flavor if you'd like. Once all your tomatoes are cut and in your pot, fire it up and get cooking. This is going to take quite a while to cook. I like to keep it at a gentle boil and I like to come through and stir it about every 20 to 30 minutes. Whenever I make any tomato product in a pot on the stove, I like to use this big metal spatula because it has a flat bottom and it's very rigid for stirring the pot because I can scrape the bottom and make sure no tomatoes are sticking because if they are, that is how you get burnt tomatoes and it will give your whole sauce or your whatever you're making a burnt flavor and that is no good. And as this cooks, what you'll notice on the side of your pot is that you can see where the tomatoes started. This isn't where they started when they were fresh, fresh and all piled in there, but once they kind of softened and were swimming in their own juices, they'll leave a mark on the inside of the pot, which is really helpful. So take note of where that mark is because our goal is gonna to be to cook these tomatoes down by about half. I like to set a timer on my phone so that I don't forget I have this on the stove and I make sure to come back and stir it every 20 to 30 minutes. It really is important to do that to prevent it from burning. And how long it takes really depends on a lot of things, including how high you're cooking it and the water content of the tomatoes that you started with. I think this is about perfect. This is done to me. You can see a lot of the liquid has evaporated. It's looking pretty thick. The next step is to let it cool. It just needs to be cool enough to blend. You should never blend really hot stuff. Trust me, I've learned that the hard way. It explodes all over and burns you. So I like to let this cool a decent amount. In fact, I often make this a two-day process. I'll cook the tomatoes in the pot the first day, just let it sit overnight, and then do the second leg of this race the next day. And because we left the skins in, I do love the texture that the skin adds to this, but because of that, you'll need either a high-powered blender or an immersion blender will also work too. I just work in batches and blend it up really good. You really want to blend this well so that you get all those little pieces of skin blended up. And the reason I'm pouring this into a pan is because the next step is to bake it in a low oven, which will evaporate the rest of the moisture and turn it into paste. This is a great technique that makes it really easy to do without burning it. I really like an enamel pan for this, but if you have a metal pan and it's a good quality, that can work too. You generally don't want this to be more than an inch thick on your pan and more like a half an inch is better. So use multiple pans if you need to. I'm cooking this at 225 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a nice gentle temperature. And this is what it looks like after an hour of cooking. Not much change, but that is to be expected. I probably put this on the pan a little bit thick. I'd recommend you go a little thinner. I should have put this on two pans, but that just means it will take me a little bit longer to finish it. And this is gonna take as long as it's gonna take to finish. It might take you four hours, it might take you eight hours. It just depends on how thick you have it on the pan. Thinner is better, it will go much faster. And it also depends on the amount of moisture that was in it to begin with. Another hour has passed. You can see this is starting to get a little bit darker on top. It's starting to get a little bit thicker. I find that in the beginning when this is loose and liquidy still, stirring every hour is plenty. I like to come in with my spatula and pull the tomatoes away from the sides of the pan because the sides is where they cook the most first. So I make sure to stir it up really good and then redistribute it so that it's in a nice even layer again. 
Another couple hours have passed and look at how thick this is getting. Look at how lovely and smooth that is. When it starts to get this thick, I like to come in and stir it every 30 minutes just to make sure that it doesn't burn. One thing that I like to do that I did not do a great job of on this batch is using a spatula to scrape the tomatoes from the sides of the pan. Anything that is up on the sides of the pan is going to burn, which you can see here, and it's going to burn and brown and not be usable and you'll lose it. So after I spread out the tomato paste, I like to come through with the spatula and just make sure the edges are as clean as I can get them before putting it back in the oven. When to call this done is up to you. I probably could have called it done at the last clip if I wanted to, but I really love a thick and luscious tomato paste, which this definitely is. Look at how thick and beautiful this turned out. The next step is to let this cool and then pack it into a bowl or into a container and put it in the fridge overnight. I really love using a spring-loaded scoop to portion this out. This scoop is about one tablespoon. It's actually a little bit more, but I kind of don't care. <laughs> I just will use a little bit more than one tablespoon's worth at a time, even if my recipe calls for one tablespoon. This makes it really easy to portion. You could also freeze this in like an ice cube tray, but I think it could be a little bit more messy that way. This works really slick. I'll put this pan in the freezer until they are frozen solid, which probably takes at least four hours, but I tend to just leave things overnight and then deal with it the next day. Once frozen, I load them into a freezer bag quickly so they don't thaw, and then I'm gonna stash them in the freezer where they should last for about a year. And because they're portioned out so nicely in one tablespoon, about one tablespoon quantities, I can just take out whatever I need for a recipe and in a lot of cases, I won't even thaw these first. If it's something like a soup, I can just take out the frozen little blob and throw it right into my pot. And that's it, homegrown, homemade tomato paste. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you could give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you are the first to know whenever a new video is posted.